Hi, welcome back to the Guillemot Kayaks Workshop. I'm Nick Shada. Back in the summer, I promised to make some uh, kayak paddle building videos, and now it's December, and I'm just getting to it. Um, but what I'm looking to build is some paddles like these. It's a fairly typical Euro-style uh, wide-bladed paddle. I can make these in various aspect ratios, wide blade, narrow blade, long, short, whatever. Um, this one happens to be a unfeathered paddle and this one is a feathered so you see the blade back here as it at an angle to the other blade so the basic process is i build a shaft and i build the blades put them together shape them and it goes from there so working backwards on the process here's a part some partially built uh paddles and the blades, I've started to shape the blades on these. They're on shafts. I've started to shape the shaft on this. And I've got a scarf cut in the middle that'll allow me to glue it end for end and make a feathered paddle. The shafts start as material like this. This is a laminated shaft. I've got Sitka spruce um, laminated onto an ash core. And this would be perfect for an unfeathered one-piece paddle. Otherwise, I have a bunch here of half shafts for making feathered paddles. These would get a scarf cut on one end and the blades glued on the other end. And so these are all set up, ready to make a bunch of paddles. I've got enough for four paddles here. I've got um, several of these shafts made, enough to make another four or five paddles. And then the blades start out like this as a rectangular blade, um, but it's pre-curved and glued to the shaft. So I start with a shaft something like this and where I've tapered the ends to put the blade on and pre-cut a curve on the power face of this and this has um, got a couple scarfs on it ready to make an unfeathered paddle. The blades start out as a big block of wood. So here I have a block of wood already pre-cut into a bunch of blades. So I've pre-cut the curves, so this is scrap, this is half a blade, this is another half a blade. You see that they're tapered from end to end, and I cut them in opposing tapers. So this one will flip around, go like that, glued to the side of a shaft, and that will be the blank for a blade. So what I'm going to do is um, glue up some more blade blanks and glue up some more shaft blanks. Um, I've got a little bit of wood here and various, various kinds of woods and we'll see what I can put together to make a few good paddles. I have these shafts and uh, blades already made um, and so I'll probably end up gluing together some of those so I can start shaping those. So in choosing the woods I want to use while making the paddle, I have a couple things I want to keep in mind. I want lightweight and I want strong. In this case I used for the main body of the blade I used western red cedar. This is some nice dark western red cedar. Um, very lightweight. It's not the strongest wood. It, you know for its weight it's quite strong but um, to reinforce that a little bit I've got these accents here in ash. It just gives a little bit more stiffness to the blade. The blade is also fiberglass, which gives a lot of strength. We'll get into that later. Um, and then for the shaft, um, my go-to wood is Sitka spruce. This happens to be Sitka spruce. Um, again, lightweight and quite strong, but to give it a little bit more stiffness, I like to put some hardwood in the lamination just to stiffen it up in the center of the lamination. So in this case, it happens to be mahogany. Um, I'll typically use ash in there also. I'll look through my wood stacks and see what I've got. So here I have some Sitka spruce. This is uh, two and three quarters inches wide by two and an eighth thick. And here we have some walnut, which is two and three quarters wide by uh, seven eighths thick. So I think I can get a couple good shafts out of this. Um, the 
typical shaft dimensions I want are uh, one and an eighth by one and a quarter. So it's a little oval shaped when it's finished. Now it's determining a trade off between lightweight and stiff. So the Sitka spruce will keep it light. The more Sitka spruce there is, the lighter it will be. And then the walnut, the hardwood, will stiffen it up. The more uh, hardwood that's in it, the stiffer it will be, but the heavier it will be. So finding that trade-off between lightweight and stiff depends on how you're going to use it a little bit and uh, what your goals for the paddle are. And then just seeing what we have available for material. So I think what I'm going to try to do is resaw this walnut approximately in half, then plane that down to thickness, see what I've got, and then use that to determine what sort of dimensions I'm going to cut the Sitka spruce at um, so I get my final dimensions. Um, I think I'll be able to rip this into enough laminations and this into enough laminations that I should be able to get two paddles out of the width of this and then those blanks can be ripped in half so I can get a couple more shafts out of that. My first plan is to resaw this approximately in half um, so we'll aim, this is 7 eighths, blade thickness is about an eighth, so if we run this at 3 eighths, we should be able to get two 3 eighths pieces out of it approximately. Probably thicker than I need, but I can plane them down afterwards. So this will cut all the way through in one pass. Uh, it might be a little hard on it, but I think it'll work fine. And then I'll have that re on and I can plane it to thickness. So when I got these uh, walnut pieces cut down and got rid of all the rough spots and blade burn and so forth, I'm down to a quarter inch thick here. So, so we have a quarter inch thick for this. I want a one and an eighth thick shaft. When I glue it, the Sitka on either side, I want one and an eighth. So that's nine eighths and I'm going to take away two eighths. So we're going to end up with 7 eighths, and I want equal amount on either side, so that's going to be 7 sixteenths. So we'll cut something a little bit oversized from 7 sixteenths in the Sitka spruce to glue on either side. So with the Sitka spruce here, you see it's got a little bit of a curve to it. Looking down that length, it's got a little bit of a curve. Um, it's not a big deal because when I laminate it together, I can laminate it straight. I'll take the two halves flip them around so then the stress balances on each one of them, put them back together, glue them together straight, and they should stay straight. Um, the problem is I'd like to cut this side up against the fence. So instead of trying to straighten it out, I'll just run the curved edge along the fence. Unfortunately, this is the rough face, so I'm just going to run this through the plane to get it down to a nice smooth face so it'll run consistently through the uh, saw and we'll have a nice clean cut. So what I'm left with here is a piece that's one and seven eighths thick. Um, I need to cut at least seven sixteenths pieces out of this. Um, so four of those would end up being just perfect. But uh, that's not gonna, I'm not going to be able to get that given the curve of the blade. Um, even if I went with a thinner curve, I couldn't get it. So what I'm going to do is cut a bunch that are just over a half inch thick um, and plane those down to the 7 sixteenths I need. That way, if I have any uh, flaws in my cut, I can get them right down perfect. And so we'll aim for a little bit over half inch thick. So here we have one that's uh, 5 8 thick, and these are each 9 sixteenths and about 9 sixteenths. So we'll just um, run these through the plane a few times, get them uh, cleaned up, and get them down to 7 sixteenths. So 
So I left these about a 30 second oversize. So when I glue everything together, it'll be about a 16th oversize. And then I can run it through the plane again, get everything straightened out. If there's any added flaws, uh, just taking a 30 second off each side. So I've got some nice looking Western red cedar here for the blades. Um, what I want to do is choose which one of these I'm going to use. And a couple things to keep in mind. A is the color. You know, I like the color. I think this will look really nice. It's a nice, rich, it's a nice, rich dark brown. Um, and then we want to look at the grain. Here you see a lot of wide grain in this one, and here it's very narrow. Um, but if we think about how the blades are going to be cut, so this is a sample blade. Basically, we're taking this two by material like that, and then we're going to cut a blade out of it. So I like to have sort of vertical grain in the blade, or close to vertical. So when I look at these, I want to get close to vertical on these. It can be a little bit hard to see what the grain is if I zoom in right here, you know, the saw blades. Um, make some marks there. It's hard to distinguish the grain from the saw marks. So what I'm going to do is just uh, get in So there you can get a little bit better look at the grain and you can see diagonals running this way. So this is pretty close to vertical or this one. So here it's diagonal like this but up here it's diagonal like that, so it's closer to flat when we cut through this way. Where this one's going to be closer to uh, vertical all the way across. It's going to be a little bit more uniform. We've got diagonal lines running like that. So this one sort of has a better grain orientation to get those vertical grain pieces. So I'm going to select this one. I'll put this one back on the stack. and. Uh, We'll work on breaking that down. So the longest blades I make are 21 inches, so I'm going to cut these into 21 inch long sections, approximately. So for the um, spline in the blades, I'm going to use some ash. I've got a nice piece of ash here. Um, and Likewise, I'll cut this into 21 inch sections. I've got a little bit of a check down here, so I'll cut that off, then get some 21 inch sections. And then these will be ripped down to about five and a half inches wide and resawed into thinner pieces. So for the um, spline in the blades. I'm going to use some ash. I've got a nice piece of ash here. Um, and likewise, I'll cut this into 21 inch sections. I've got a little bit of a check down here, so I'll cut that off and get some 21 inch sections. And then these will be ripped down to about five and a half inches wide and resawed into thinner pieces.
I just got some new clamps and I have a tendency to get glue all over my clamps. So I'm going to put a little wax on them just to make the glue peel off better should I get glue on them. These pieces were cut out of the board like this. So you can see the continuous grain goes across there. What I'm going to do is just fold this piece back. And that way, the grain here will match. And you see it is coming out in diagonals like this and diagonals like that. So essentially, we've got a book match on these two pieces. And as a result, um, these two pieces here will be as close to each other as they can be. And what's going to happen um, when we cut through these is we're cutting in a curve. And if we pay attention to the direction we cut these curves, it will influence the shape of the grain and the cut pieces. So, for example, here you see on this one, the grain comes out and back in again in the, a bit of a mirror image there. And so we're trying to get as much of a mirror image as we can here. And I like this pattern where the grain sweeps back in at the ends. Um, better than when it sweeps out, just as an aesthetic thing. And I think it, it mimics the shape of the paddle a little. So we're going to take these two pieces, take our piece of ash, throw them in between. And so that's going to be the blank we're going to glue up. I sanded both these surfaces, so there's a good gluing surface there. And we'll apply some glue in between, clamp it together. I'm going to be using Type Bond 3 here. This is waterproof. Honestly, it doesn't really need to be on the paddle blades. It's going to be, the blades are going to be covered with fiberglass, but uh, I'm going to be using this same stuff on the shafts, where the shafts, even though they're going to be varnish, have a little bit more chance of getting wet. So I'm going to just make sure I'm using a waterproof glue on that. You could use epoxy. You could use um, a urethane glue, like a, a Gorilla Glue, something like that. I've used just about anything. Those uh, powdered glues that uh, uroformaldehyde glue, I believe, um, I've used that. Works very nicely. Lots of things work quite well on that. Um, when I go to glue this up, I'm going to uh, stack all the blanks together so I save on clamps and get a little bit better clamping that way, a little bit more efficient. So this is going to be together like this. So I'll put glue on these surfaces and um, both surfaces of the ash and uh, assemble it that way. So these blanks are all glued together. I'll just put those aside and uh, start gluing up the shaft. Again, these two pieces are uh, curved a little bit, but I'm putting them opposite each other so they can uh, balance out and end up with a nice balanced laminate. With this one where I only have one extra piece, I'm going to take, cut it in half, actually cut the center piece in half too. and. Uh, That'll end up with as two half shafts that I can uh, scarf together to make a feathered paddle. sure everything glues up straight I'm just going to clamp this uh, these shafts down to my workbench it is eight foot shafts like an eight foot workbench and uh, that should keep everything nice and straight
So that's the uh, shafts all glued up. I've got the uh, blade blanks all glued up. Huh. And in the next episode, I'll uh, start cutting these down into uh, real shafts and real blades, and maybe we'll see what we can get glued together tomorrow. Let me just talk a little bit about wood selection. Um, you know, I did those blade blanks as three laminations. Essentially, you can laminate up these in any combination of woods you like. Um, it's a great opportunity to be a little bit imaginative with it, come up with some new interesting layups and things that just look cool. Lots of wood are good for this. Here I'm using cedar and ash. Cedar is always a good choice for lightweight. You could use Sitka spruce in the blades, um, any kind of cedar. White cedar is great. Pine would work just fine. You can go to Home Depot and get some nice clear pine and uh, just stack a bunch of laminations up for that and make a really nice blade. Same with the shaft. I have some where I've made the shaft out of uh, western red cedar. It's not quite as strong as the Sitka, but in good lamination, um, you can make something really strong and lightweight. One nice thing about the lamination is you can take really sort of crappy wood and turn it into something quite strong by offsetting any flaws in the wood so they're not all lined up. Um, even knotty stuff, you can saw it up into thin pieces, glue it back together again in a random orientation and end up with something pretty strong. So um, lamination is a fun way to be imaginative and it's a good way to use lesser quality wood and make it into something sort of better quality. So if you're finding this interesting and you'd like to see more like this, hit like, subscribe, or go over to my Patreon and chip in a little bit to help support the effort it takes to put these videos together. I really appreciate any support you can provide. So until the next episode, thanks for watching and happy paddling.